history. Tom Thompson is a formidable name in the world of art, and a staple in the lexicon of Canadian history. His palette continues to define the aesthetics of a national identity and stand the test of time as an ageless reminder that life is all around us. His paintings capture the fleetingly unpredictable and often violent nature of the wild terrain. Brush strokes that dance in a manic array of fervor define the artist's glare, which is only matched by the constant changing tone of the tides with the wind, a temperament that seems to also be reflected in Thompson, who is noted to have been somewhat chaotic, having a general calm demeanor contrasted with bouts of frustration. In one such instance, casting his artwork aside and having to hike back to retrieve it the next day. In this instance, he may have been with A.Y. Jackson, whom he lived with for a year. The two would often fish and sketch together in Algonquin Park, his first visit being in 1912. This is the place he would return frequently. On many unaccompanied trips to canoe, paint, and fish in the wilderness surrounding Toronto. It is this relationship with Jackson and other notable Canadian artists that often leads to the misattribution of Tom Thompson as a member of the Group of Seven which was not founded until after his death. The most notable characteristic defining Tom's art is his swift, sharp, jabbing approach. Like a boxer when cornered, advancing without reprieve, it is a harnessed attack. This mark of aggression, a necessity in coaxing permanence onto an erratic target. In taming the beast, one must consign to oblivion and embrace the devil, for the devil is in the details. In the case of Tom Thompson, the details of his life are largely shrouded in mystery. What we do know for fact is the man, not the legend, was born in 1877, a boy in Claremont and raised in Leith, Ontario. Art and music was a staple in the Thompson home, and most of the ten children had some creative outlet. As a developing young man, he began working as an engraver and illustrator in 1901. Three years were spent in Seattle and the remainder of his career in Toronto, and he had a strong reputation for his letter engraving work. In this time, he attempted to enlist for military service multiple times, but continued to be rejected for health reasons. Aside from that, he later worked as a ranger and fishing guide to allow more time for painting. He did not even start using oil paint until 1906, which he quickly mastered. In 1914, Dr. James McCalcum paid for a year of Tom's living expenses, and from this time on, he worked seriously as a professional painter. It is from 1914 to 1917 that the bulk of his paintings come from. Aside from painting, Tom took great pride in his skills as a fisherman, even going as far as learning to tie his own fishing lures. He was all around an excellent woodsman. 
this seems to continue to only add more fire to his mythos in his pantheon of legend. It is, in fact, fishing he was last seen doing in his canoe at noon on July 8, 1917, before his disappearance near Canoe Lake. Was Thompson's consummation of an illegitimate love child the motive for a jealous husband's lethal revenge? Did the painter accidentally stumble upon poachers in the act of a crime? Was it depression from lack of success that drove him to suicide? Or did he simply turn his canoe over in dangerous rapids, striking his head on the jagged rock below? On July 16th, his family received an upsettingly vague telegram which read, Found Tom this morning. He had sustained a four-inch cut on his right temple, and his right ear had bled. On July 18th, he was buried at Canoe Lake, only to be exhumed on the 21st and moved to Leith, Ontario. Some say he was exhumed again, and some claim his body never left Canoe Lake. The sun still sets on Canoe Lake every night. This vibrant glow still paints delicate tributes in Tom Thompson's honor, and as long as the sun continues to rise each morning, his legacy will live on.